So you're probably thinking like in 2023, do we really still need a website? Um, I would say yes. And I don't just say that because I build them because um, honestly, there's some businesses I would say don't need a website, but I think just about all businesses, like 97.5% are gonna need a website for a few key reasons. Firstly, a website gives you credibility. It shows someone that you're legitimate. You've gone to the effort of building an online place where you can undertake the sort of messages you need to undertake and to clearly and I guess concisely explain who you are, what you do, what you do and, and what kind of customers you do that for. That's really important because having just a spot on Facebook or having a place on LinkedIn or even a TikTok channel may bring you some initial sales for a very short period of time. But for longevity, you need to be also not just uh, getting people's attention on social media, but you need to be found through searches in say Google. And to do that, it gives you credibility. When someone looks for you, finds an official website that's yours, that helps them to make a much more clear and sensible decision to use your products and services. There's also the point of verification. Quite often people look at, they see something on social media and we've kind of been trained to think, mm, do I really trust that? Is that thing on social media the real deal? Or am I just dealing with something which is a here today, gone, for, gone tomorrow, fly by nighter that's opened a drop shipping page on Shopify and then we never hear from them again after they take our money and don't actually deliver something. So that verification of having an official homepage, an official website, which explains who you are, um, how the, your refund policies may work, what your full suite of capabilities are, going a little bit further than what you can go in a very limited social media profile. It's important. It's also important that it's your owned space. Now we find that now, particularly using things like Facebook and Instagram, they're very big, they've become very busy. For a, for a business to stand out on those platforms, you have to be ex either extraordinary or you have to pay for your way to be seen. So that means that you need to do Facebook ads, Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads, all that kind of thing. When social media becomes so busy and there's too many people posting, too many things that are very interesting and going viral, then making your business message come through becomes something you have to do that's pay for play. What you want to do then is have a place that your business is at the center of attention with no other distractions around it. And that is a website. That's where you can send people through to a place that's dedicated just to you, your products, your services, your message, and your way of putting that across. No algorithms are going to get in the way. No um, you know, the blocking by, by, by community standards violations is going to get in your way. You get to say what you want to say the way you want to say it on your own piece of property. Then we look at, okay, those first three, there's another three ways that having a website is a great advantage to you. First of all, it's the findability, the fact that you can now be found in Google far more easily. Now, whilst your LinkedIn profile or your Facebook page or your Instagram profile, even to a degree, maybe your TikTok profile, but not really, even though those things can be found through Google, the number one thing that should come up for you is generally your website. It's the most validated, the most credible, and the most official of all the things you'll have. Whilst um, a Facebook page is one thing and an Instagram profile is another, and even a, and a LinkedIn company page is another great thing to have, that is all brought together by your own website, which is far more credible, but also far more findable because you can put lots more information into that that's readable by Google. Google will only read certain things from social networks. It will only read, for instance, um, the, the information on your Facebook homepage, or Facebook page, sorry, your business page, such as your email address, your website address, your locations, opening hours, that kind of thing. It will only then read from something like LinkedIn, uh, your company page information, but not your posts, unless you create articles, which are actually able to be indexed in Google as well. But what gets far better indexed than an article on LinkedIn is an article on your own website. So whether that's done as a blog or it's just a page of content on your website, it's more findable, it indexes better, and it's also not competing with you know, 3 billion other people on that same platform who are all screeching for attention. You also have some brand safety. There's nothing worse than going to Facebook and seeing that your ad has been mixed between your, your very racist neo-Nazi uncle and someone below who's trying to sell a network marketing campaign. 
not exactly the best look for your business and your posts in there as well. What you want to do is make sure you've got some sort of safety, some sort of delineation between everything else that's going on that could be good, bad, or ugly, um, and then your stuff. On your own website, you have complete control of that. It's also a great fallback. If you lose access to your Facebook page, you lose access to your Instagram account, you have been hacked every which way to Wednesday by um, people who have got into your email and accessed all of your social media properties, then a great feedback is a website, which is completely separated from all those things. You don't access it because of your email, you access it because of a different set of logins. So having a website is a great fallback in case disaster strikes and you no longer have access to your social media properties. So why then, websites so expensive. I know that there's a group here in, in, in my town who will not work on a website under $10,000. Another group who actually looks at around about $11,000 to $21,000 for a website. Why is a website so expensive these days? Well, it's mostly because people are expensive. You've got to pay web developers quite a bit because they are specifically skilled to work in specific kind of systems. Some of those systems might be WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, Joomla, Drupal, so other website builders like um, you know, Wave Builder, um, Card. There's lots of them out there. Um, Doodar is another one that a lot of people seem to sell at the moment. They do take specific skills to be able to do them and do them well and do them right. It's also, it's a complex operation. Building a website is not just about dragging and dropping things into the right place. Places. It's all about having a little bit of um, a bit of uh, ability to be able to write. Copywriting is a skill that's necessary. After that, you've got the ability for you to um, you know pick the right images. It can be do due to uh, finding right color combinations. And then there's other skills that sit outside of just web design, things like conversion optimization. That's a big lot of words, but it basically means that your website gets optimized to get a result at the end of it, usually a sale or an inquiry or some point of contact that someone is going to follow some call to action to do that. But there's a, a certain... Um, there's always a science that goes into getting a website to be conversion optimized. Which also means that once you add all these things on, there's multiple layers of cost involved in websites. It's not just slapping something together that looks pretty. It's all about thinking in terms of psychology. It's about adding you know, calls to action, which requires inter interactions with external systems like MailChimp or SendinBlue or, or, or HubSpot. There's so many layers of cost to be added onto this once you start. And then you add on things like, shopping carts and you want to be able to sell products on there. So that again is another cost. And if you've got 500 different variations of items, someone has to manually enter all that stuff in. So they, we get back to that people are expensive thing. Yes, people are expensive, especially when you have to spend lots of hours working with them. There's also that what they call a once-off factor. Web designers don't really have a lot of chances to make a lot of big money out of you apart from this one project they're going to do with you, which is your website. Um, they can maybe make you know, a couple of hundred dollars a year out of web hosting, maybe a couple of hundred dollars even a month out of uh, providing your updates and giving you support and, 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 and maybe updating your website content for you here and there. But really the, the main amount of money they're ever going to make from you is once off when they make that website, when they deliver that website. So they have to make it count. That's why it costs so much when you're looking for between five and even $20,000 for a website is because these people can't just keep finding new clients all the time and making new websites at low cost all the time, unless they have a business model that does really support that. What you probably need to look at is the idea that they are going to probably only going to make one lot of money off you in their life. So they really need that money to kind of last a bit longer than just, you know, what a, a few hundred dollars will. And then there's the upsell. So they'll upsell you to email. They'll upsell you to uh, you know analytics in, in installations. Upload, upload you, update you to like a customer relationship management systems. So things do kind of pile up from there. And then there's the updates. Anyone who's ever had a WordPress website will know that updates get out of control very, very quickly. Hopped into one today. 37 updates had to be run. Why they had 37 different plugins is beyond me, but what it did do is make me think, wow, this is a this is a troubled website that needs a lot of help and it's going to take me some time because I have to update each one of those things one at a time just in case one of those updates 
breaks something in the website. So we don't want that happening because that could be a loss of business for someone. So all these factors add up to websites being quite expensive. So if you have to do it yourself, what are the options that are out there? The first one is the, the most well-known, the biggest, the 43% of all websites in the world, WordPress. It's very flexible. Tons, like literally thousands of themes, thousands of plugins, tens of thousands of professionals who work in this every single day, myself included. It's very configurable. It, you can make endless kind of things with it. It's got lots of ways you can plug in third-party systems to it but it's absolutely and utterly ridiculous for about 99% of all businesses on this planet. It's overkill. What I describe it as, it's like going fishing with a, with a, with a petrol bomb. You, know, you want to throw a grenade in the water to kill all the fish, but you really just want to catch one fish. This is not the tool to do that catch one fish thing with. WordPress is a beast of a thing to get your head around. It's also constantly being updated. And because it's the by far the biggest website system in the world at 43% of all websites on the planet, it also happens to be the most hacked and most vulnerable piece of software in the world. By far the, the vast majority, and we're talking about well over 92% of all WordPress websites are using what we call wordpress.org, which is the free version of WordPress that gets installed into web hosting and then is self-managed from that point. You have to do your security updates yourself. You have to do all your plugin updates yourself. It's a lot of work each month. I host over 600 WordPress websites myself through various web hosts, and I have to have systems that will go through and tell me things that are out of date so that I can press a button to update them all every single morning. So every single morning, 600 and something websites get updated by me remotely, um, and then I will get a big list of things that failed their updates, and I have to go into making those. This morning, there were 72 of those that I had to go and manually update. So it takes a lot of time. Now, that's, that's, that's someone who does all the hosting of WordPress. For you, that might be the case, not be the case. You've only got one site, but think about all those things you have to do is working into a back of a website every single week and looking for updates and running them and, and fixing them if they, if they break the site. Is that really part of your week you want to play with? If it's not, then one of the other options is Wix. Wix.com has lots of add-ons for websites, um, lots of templates. They've got tons and tons of examples of really beautiful templates, but, and this is a big but, Wix gets really expensive really quickly. Whilst you don't have to buy web hosting for it because it hosts its own product, you also can't take your WordPress website, your Wix website with you. WordPress, you can move to other web hosts. You can move to other people. Other people can work on it. Wix is kind of stuck with Wix. It's a complete all-in-one service. So once you're with Wix and you built your site with Wix, you cannot export that site and take it to Squarespace or take it to WordPress or take it to your own hosting. It's not the way it works. It's one all-in-one system, kind of like Apple. You can't take iMessage out of your iPhone and put it onto an Android phone. It just doesn't work that way. So just like that, Wix is all-in-one and it can add up. To get a basic e-commerce website, you're starting to get into quite a big amount of dollars, like to, to that 40 to $50 level. And especially when it's in uh, American dollars, it makes it a little bit worse because our exchange rate is never particularly favorable in that case. So the key thing there to remember is that Wix has so much it can do, but again, how much complexity is your business really need? Then we can look at Squarespace, which is the next biggest of the, um, the all-in-one systems, but it's got the same problem. Yeah, lots of add-ons, lots of templates, beautiful to use, but it can be quite a headache to set up and it can be really expensive once you start adding on all the extra things you need. Once you sort of get to the, okay, I want email, that's going to be extra. Once I want to sell things online, that's extra. You're starting to get into a really big, a lot of problems where you're, you're paying $60, $70 a month for a website. And again, Squarespace does a lot of stuff, but you probably don't need just about all of the things it does. So then there's things like Card. Now, Card.co is a new generation of DIY, do-it-yourself website builders that's fairly inexpensive. It's, it's free to have a one page. So for instance, if you wanted to um, create a sales campaign that you then just have a quick one page up there, which allows people to convert to a, a Stripe or a PayPal payment for a particular thing you want to sell via ads on Facebook or Instagram, 
it's great for that. And you can use the free version of that. You don't have to pay, but it doesn't have a pretty looking domain name. You're not going to have like a yourwebsite.com kind of approach. It's going to be like whatever card allocates as your address. So that becomes a problem when you want to be brand safe, when you want to be able to um, have you know, your own domain name attached to that. This is also only one page. Like it's pretty good, but it's just one page. You don't get like a, a more page. You don't get like a, a lot of breadth of content. You just get one page. So that means you're going to have to like put everything on that endlessly scrolling one page. I'll tell you now that that Google doesn't like lots of content on one page. It likes to be able to spread the content across multiple pages with each page being dedicated to a particular kind of information. The good thing about this though, to add a domain name on is $19 US per year. So if you even wanted to have your own domain name for that free, for that basic one page, um, that basic one page uh, web page that you're going to get is only going to cost you $19 US anyway, which is probably around about $25 to $26 Australian at the moment. So it's a great alternative, really simple to build, but you can go one step further and have a real website on a thing called Google Sites. Now, Google Sites is possibly the most underutilized, unknown thing that Google does really well. Google tends to try and make things as simple as possible to be able to use. So especially in their pieces of software, they are after all a completely a software company and an advertising company. So if you imagine if Google's going to make a, a, a website product that would make it easy to use, and it certainly does that. Google Sites is based upon being free. You don't have to pay for anything on it, except for if you want to domain, have a domain name. So you don't need web hosting. It does all that for you. Google's got their own servers for all that. The builder is free. You can build a site for free and get, a, and get a, a, an address on the internet without having to pay anything. Once you add the domain, it's $18 Australian per year. So we're not talking about US dollars, $18 Australian per year. And like most places, when you go to you know um, crazy domains and GoDaddy, they force you to register your Australian domain for two years. Google only requires you to do it for one year. So you can literally have a website for one year, set it all up, host it yourself because it's all there and hosted. You don't have to take it to a web host. $18 a year for something that's got a domain name. So if it all sounds too good to be true, it probably usually is. But in this case, Google site does have a lot of advantages and it's not really, I think, a, a too good to be true. You can host as many sites as you like. So for you, if you've got three businesses, you can have three websites, three websites in your Google account. You can have as many pages on your website as you like. If you want to create a new page for every single blog you have, you can do that too. It doesn't have a blog associated with it, but you can build a blog using a third party tool, for instance, like Blogger, which is Google's own blogging tool. You can add on Google Workspace, which allows you to have your custom domain name, your mywebsite.com. Um, and then you can have your you know, info at mywebsite.com email address through Google Workspace. But you have to do that through a personal account first. And that's one of the limitations you've got. How it works is that you have to have a Google address, uh, the Google uh, account, sorry. It doesn't have to be a Gmail address, but it has to be a Google account that you have set up at some point. Chances are, if you've got Google's Chrome browser, you already have a Google account. If you've got a Gmail address, you already have a Google account. So you're already in the right place already. Most people have a Google account. So once you've got that Google account, you go to sites.google.com. It's just the same as if you're looking for search, search.google.com, or you're looking for email, it could be mail.google.com. Sites.google.com takes you into a world for building your website, but it must be a personal Gmail account or a personal, um, you can't have a, a Google Workspace paid Gmail account to start this off. So I could have my, my Dante at clickstarter.com.au is a Gmail account, but it's a Google Workspace Gmail account, a paid version with my domain name on it. So if you're going to use a Google email for this, it must be a gmail.com, not a yourdomain.com or .com.au. So that's the only real restriction we've got. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump in to Google Sites. This is what mine looks like. 
So if you can see that, I'm going to just make my screen a little bit bigger so you can see it a bit more closely. So in here, you can see a bunch of other places that I've been building websites for or who've built websites alongside me. So you've got the guys from Immersions. We've got sites with Southside G2E, Darwin Play Therapy, Authentic Bush, Tucker Jams, and Chutneys. Um, we've got the Estrata Management Service, which we started to build for. My own public speaking coaching business is in there as well. So it's um, in a, so people are able to book my public speaking coaching. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to take you for a look at that one and show you what a live one looks like. So it's called Speak Starter. So Speak Starter is this is my website. I built this in Google Sites. So as you go through it, it's pretty attractive. It's nice and big. It's got lots of uh, really clear writing on it. It's graphical. It's got images that I've been able to insert in there. Photo of good old yours truly with a bit of stuff on there. My packages and pricing. And I can click on those packages and pricing, go to a page for my private coaching. And it gives you what the private coaching looks like. In here, I've also put in a booking calendar. So you can look at when I'm available to take a 15 minute consultation, three o'clock on uh, Thursday, December 15. Here's all the details you can put in all within this particular website. Now, obviously this is Calendly. If anyone knows Calendly, they know that this is Calendly. So it looks very, very similar to what you would expect from different Calendly people. But you can see I've got a monthly speaking club page where you can actually you know, learn more about the monthly speaking club and book in when the next one is. So the next one's until February 15 next year. Um, my groups and corporate page. So in there, I've got a photo of me training a group of people here in Darwin. And then I've got all the information about how you can learn more about booking a time to chat with me about your own corporate or group booking as public speaking training. And then you now I've even got a member discounts page where I say, okay, if you're a member of these particular organizations, this is the kind of discount that you can expect to get because you're a member. So this is a really nice, attractive, clear, easy to read website. It cost me $18. So $18 was simply for this domain name at the top. Otherwise, the, the, the actual website itself was free. I built all that for free. The only things I got is like my Calendly account, which I already had anyway elsewhere. But all this other stuff was free to be able to build. So it's all inside this tool here. So once we're in here, the best thing to do is probably think about the kind of business you have and then look in the, set, in the template gallery to see if there's something which suits you. I'll make this a bit bigger so you can see what all these variations are. So someone in maybe healthcare and well-being, if you're an event, Maybe you're a freelancer who wants to show their portfolio. You can look at um, one here is about a project. There's one here for teams, small businesses like dog walking, Christmas party invitations, a photo, uh, like a photographer's portfolio. You can be a restaurant, a salon of, of any kind of description, personal nails, um, massage, hair, you can be an educator or a coach of some degree. So there's a bunch of things that are already built in with some templates. You can pick those up and adjust them. So if I was to say, let's um, pretend that we are a, uh, a salon. So I can go to salon, select it, and it's now going to go in and create me a copy of that, that, that website. So you see here, I'll make it smaller so you can uh, see the whole thing better. So it's created now that whole website. So I can put it my salon as, the, as the, the name of it. And then it's already set, set me up a services page, an about page, a testimonials page, and a contact page. I may say that I don't like the picture of that salon. I can just hover on the elements I want to change and I'm able to change them. See how it surrounds it with a little box that says you can now change that. I could say our full service salon awaits you. So the key is here not to move things around and change them too much. You might want to change an image in the background. So if I change an image, I can select an image from either a gallery of preset images that it's already given me. None of these look really appropriate for a hair salon though. So I can go back and go, okay, I can go and look for a search for a photo. I can also upload one. Um, I can find one by my Google Drive. I can upload a, a new photo or I can go type in hair salon to Google and it will find me photos of a hair salon that are royalty free. So these hair salon photos you can use and not get into trouble. They've already been vetted by Google as, a, as ones that can be used. So let's find this one for instance here, select it, 
put it in and it's now going to insert it and it's adjusting for readability here. That means what it's doing is making it dark enough in the background so you can still read the words there. Um, if I try that again, I can remove the readability or put it back in again. So it's slightly darker. So you can read that the, the white writing a lot more clearly. So once I've changed that, I can then go, what else do I need to change? I might want to schedule a call if I need to speak with a specific stylus. I can say, not sure what you want. And I say, schedule a consult, which has then pointing to the contact page, which we saw was at the top here, the contact page, which we can jump into and we'll see now what our contact page looks like. So it's already got everything really a salon would need. This map in here can also be changed. The map, you just pick it up by just going, you can either open a new tab or I can double click on it and it will allow me then to insert a new map in there. So this map is actually going to make a liar of me now. So I just take that out and create a new one. All my tools and things I want to add are over here on the right. So I add a new map of my location. So my location is 1 slash 662 Stewart Highway Berrima. There it came up. So that's going to be a map of where I'm located. So I'm right next to the Amart furniture. So let's put it down there. I don't want it there. I want it back in where the other one was. So I pick it up and drag it and drop it. And there it is. If I want to make it the same size as the photo, stretch it down and it snaps to the right size. And there is my location. So you can make changes to all of these different items. If you don't want a testimonials page, over here, go to pages, testimonials, the little dot there, and you can delete it. And we no longer have a testimonials page. So we've reduced down the number of pages we want. Now, this is in the case of where you've found a particular layout that you really like working with. So again, all these things, you can change even the type of the header. You don't want a header at the top of your page to be that big. You may want it to just be just the title. You don't want a background. Or you might go, I just want a small one. I just want a little banner. It's just a small one like this, not this large one that they gave us. Or it may be the opposite. You might want to go all the way. You want to have like a basic one that covers the whole readable section of when someone first comes to that page. I just want a little one and that will do me. Everything gets changed along the way. You don't need to press save, but to make it go live, you need to publish. So over there. So once you publish, this is going to go live on the internet. It's going to give you, I'm going to say my own salon is going to be the page. It's going to tell me whether sites.google.com forward slash view forward slash my own salon is actually available. And it is. So that will become my free address. So once I publish it, I can go to that address. So which is um, sites.google.com forward slash view forward slash my own salon. This is now a visible, hasn't quite come on there yet, but it's going to make a liar of me today. It's going to take a little bit longer to do everything. So there's no unpublished changes. So I've got now my site ready to go and I've started creating it. I've, I can replace all these photos. You can upload, a, a, you can, Look up here, you can crop photos, you can uncrop them, you can link them, you can replace the image by uploading a photo from your own. So let's say I'll upload a photo from what I um, had something from earlier, which is a group of people who I was working with last week. So you say, oh, I, it's too much at the top because it's like a really wide photo. I want to show more of that. If I double click on that, it allows me in the move up the part of the image I really want to see, which is everyone's happy faces. And now it sits in there. So you know how you might have tried to do a website before and you put a photo in and it just doesn't quite be the size you want it to be? Once you've defined the size of the, the photo area, any photo you put in there is going to snap to fit that area. So let's say if I replace that again, I upload something else, which is a square photo. So it could be, um, where's a square photo? This one, a young man working on social media on his mobile phone. So this is actually, if I double click, that's actually a big square photo. It's actually an AI generated image. So, but I can adjust it around to focus on a particular part of where we want to focus on. So we want to focus on his face. We want to focus on enough to see he's working on a mobile phone. It snaps to the right size every time, unless I change that size and I want it to be smaller. I might want to put some writing in there. 
So if I want to put some writing on the side of that, insert, and then find what I want to put in, which is a text box. I can then drag that text box. I'll put some writing in there. This is a text box, but I don't want it to be there. I want it to be up in that area above. So I'll just pick it up and drag it where I want it to be. Whoops, here we go. So now that text box is where I want it to be. So that's where I can take a bunch of words, copy and paste it in so we can actually see what those words are going to be. And now it's in the right place. Now, a lot of these content blocks already create this kind of thing. So you've got the content blocks over on the right, which create things like, let's see if I want to create a list of three different product services that I sell. So I've put that in. I can move that up and down by dropping it into the places I want to go to. I may want that to go actually in front and before my young man working on his social media. So I put it in there and I can now start to create, put my pictures in now, just the same way. I can select an image. I can look for something on Google. So let's say we're still a, a salon, for example. So go to Google images. I can search for um, men's haircut. And it shows me men's haircuts here, various styles. So I can say this young man. Now see how this is a wide format photo. It's not a square photo, but we're going into a square space. I'm going to insert that photo in and it's going to snap it to that square space. So it's not going to make it look really bad. Same thing in here. I can select an image, find it on Google, or upload my own photo of it. In this case, I'm going to select an image from Google. I'm going to go women's haircut. Let's see what we can find. So we've got like um, you know, some that are very tall. So for instance, this one is, is a very, very long photo. It's not a square. So let's see what it does with that one. Insert it in. And it's going to again snap it to the square and crop it to the right kind of crop it needs to be. We do the same with the other. And in here, we can insert men's haircuts, women's haircuts, um, color service. So we can go you know, select an image again, go to Google, search for a royalty three free photo that we're allowed to use, and go hair color. So here we go, some, some wild hair color photos. Um, probably not him. He's a bit too wild for me. Maybe we can go this lovely lady here who's got pretty awesome pink highlights. So I'll put her in there and now we can see color service as a color service related one. You can then also write in more descriptions, but if you don't want to necessarily do that, you just want to explain that you do these things. Each one of these things can be separately. So if I select all that, it selects a whole area. But if I click down here, it just selects this section, that little bit at the bottom. So I can then remove that. It doesn't have to be there. Get rid of it, it's gone. Same with this one, get rid of it, it's gone. And this one, get rid of it, it's gone. So you can see how you can create a website rather quickly just by picking a, a particular template that's already there. Now, what I wanna do is take you back and show you what you do if you are building a website from scratch that wasn't then like that. So I'm going to delete that one because I don't really want to do that one. It's, it's one I'm not going to use anymore. So I'm going to move that to the bin. Let's build a website from scratch. So it's like blank with the plus sign. It then gives us the most basic layout of all, a heading area, which we can then name whatever we like. So we can start by going, um, my babysitting business. And we go, that's, that's pretty big. Like we probably don't want it like that. Let's go and see if there's some other styles that are available to us through themes over on the right. So on the right, we've got themes. We can change what the dominant colors are. So it's a bit of a pink, a, a green hue, a purple hue, um, that kind of hue. I might go with a pink, it looks pretty good. We can type in the site name, babysitting service. And then we look at that and go, well, I want something a bit different in the background, but I'm still, I would like to see what the variations of style might be. So let's look at Aristotle. Again, creates a very different look. You can play around with the different colors that you want to play around with. So if we want to go pink again, so you've got the pink feature there. So yeah, a bit, a bit, a little bit dull. Diplomat is one that I use quite a lot. So with Diplomat, it creates that box and a bit more of a formal, um, you know, a, a bit of a an official looking, more formal kind of layout. Vision is more modern and has a solid 
menu area. So you can say that looks kind of cool. I like that. Looks really fun. If I go pink, it even better. Hot pink, well, that might be a bit too much. Purple though, that looks good too. You then also change your fonts between bold, modern, or classic. So you have a different feel for that. Um, you can also override these fonts. So if I want to override this and choose my own font over here, I just go, look, there's a whole ton of Google fonts in there that I can select. So this Rambadra uh, is one that I've selected recently. I really like it. It's a real, I really like the feel of it, the look of it. So I've been using that one a lot myself lately. But I can also then create a custom theme that has this. So I can call it Rumba. I can add a logo in there and a banner image, or I can just go straight for a set of preset colors. I like this sort of purple lead preset colors. I can then go what I want my fonts to be. So I'm going to find that one I was using, the Rama, Rama Badra. And my body text, I want it to be that one as well, Rama Badra. So I can select my own constant display right throughout this website that's going to use it. So Rama Badra generate the theme. And now if I create more pages, it, see how it's also changed the name up there? If I was to insert any other areas like these content blocks, it's already using that new theme font. You might want to have something a bit more fun than that. You might want to override this. So you might not want that there. You might want to have something a little bit more fun. You might want to have caveat normal in there. So caveat, come on, you can do it. And have a bit more of a fun, whimsical one. Make it a bit bigger. 60, maybe a little bit smaller than that, 48. So something a little bit more whimsical. You can override into each individual section if you want to, or just set your own theme throughout the whole thing. So once we go that, we go, okay, basically we want to lay out ourselves. We want a bit of information in here, a photo of ourselves here, maybe a list of the three main products that we have, remembering that we can remove any of these sort of extra bits that we don't need. We don't need to write extra things down there. So we'll just have a list of our services. And then you might go, actually, no, what I want is um, a contact field down here. So you might want to go, okay, I'll have a, a text box with my contact details. I'll take up this first half. And then there'll be phone, email, location, trading hours. And then over on the right, we might want to select our map. So we find our map find out where we want to show the map. So we're going to go um, 12 Queen Street, Brisbane. Um, let's just go Brisbane City. Select it and then drag it up to where we want it to be, which is in there. So okay, that might be our, our area for contacting and a map of where our location may be if you want to put one in. But you can also create a whole lot of other areas. So for instance, an image carousel, if you wanted to sort of highlight your business in this first section, maybe not with this more formal layout, you want to have an image carousel in there. Let's put that in, image carousel. And then we add the images we want to have in that carousel. So I'm going to select a bunch of, upload a bunch of images that I had today that I was working with. So we've got um, this one. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. It's going to upload them all. And it's going to create a slideshow carousel out of those. So now it's all loaded them up, which is pretty quick. Insert, and here's my carousel. So what it's going to show is that I've got down here, I can go from one to the next once that goes live. If I want that to go full width, I just drag it out to full width and now it's a full width image carousel. It won't automatically play. This is an interactive carousel. So let's preview it. So that's what that button up the top is, is a preview of my page. Looking at it and going, well, I haven't saved what I was gonna do there yet. So I better, better save it first. So it was still saving, now it's saved. Let's publish it. Put this one as babysitting service. Hopefully that one, one. Yep. And let's see what it's going to look like and how that is going to work for us. That, 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 um, that slideshow. See, so it's already got these little things on the side of it. So I can flick through a slideshow if I wish to. It'll just continue over. Now that slideshow, unfortunately, we can't automate that. We can't make it auto go through, but we can have people use it 
as something they can flip through to see examples of your work or examples of the photography that you do or some of the um you can put you know in written words in there that you've done on a canva graphic for instance you can do that in there as well so that's the way to do that um what you'll also notice is that when i before wanted to preview this so i'll close this one go back here when i was previewing it had the large screen a tablet view so you can see what it's going to look like on a tablet and see what it's looking like on a mobile phone. So as you go through that, it stacks just like other things do. Now, I don't have any extra pages on this yet. So if I go and create a couple of extra pages, let's just say about um, and a services page. Now it's created extra pages. And when I go to preview it, we'll notice on here, it's created me a menu. So I can see about and services already there. So very quickly, you can build out the kind of website that you've actually been trying to probably build on something like WordPress for ages. Now, why do I say that most small businesses won't need WordPress and would need this? Primarily because most small businesses are never going to write a blog. Most small businesses are not really going to want to have um, everything in the one place. They're going to sort of go, okay, well, I've got this babysitting business. I've got a booking system that I want to embed. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. They may have you know, a few photos, a few pages, and maybe like a description of their, what they do, an about page to describe who they are. But really, you're not going to have much of a need for anything beyond that in most cases. Um, this doesn't do a blog, but what I can do is set up a blog externally. So if I want to set up like a new link, I don't have to set up a new page under here. It doesn't have to be a page. It can be maybe a, um, a new link or a full page embed. So if I want to embed code from someone, I want to call it bookings. So in here, I can add something that I want to embed from the bookings. So the embedding bookings, I could say is from my bookings at Calendly. So Calendly com Dante St. James could be my whole page. I want to embed this entire page with all my booking opportunities into this page. So I'll just go embed a URL. It scans it. It says, okay, do you want to embed the whole page or do you want to just show a little bit? I want to embed the whole page. So let's go. Let's embed the whole page. So now my booking system is completely embedded onto a page of its own. So I go home, then I go to my bookings. And then it's embedded my Calendly bookings in there. And it looks like it's part of the actual main website. So I look at the you know, Monday morning Pilates, which is not one of mine. It's an example I was using before with a client. I can then interact with that. So let's, let's see what it looks like. So in a mobile version, it literally shows like that. Look at my Monday morning Pilates. It brings on the Monday morning Pilates. I book in my Pilates session. There's seven spots left. I can confirm. I'm still within my babysitting service website. I can go back to my home page, move on to my bookings page. So that's if you're already using a booking system like that to take bookings, you just edit, you're just putting in what you already want. I'm also, I might also want to embed in my YouTube channel. So let's go to my YouTube channel, which is this. So if I take the embed, the YouTube channel address, go back to my babysitting business, close my preview, open up a new page, a new page, which is going to be, a, again, a link, not the new page here, full page embed. And I can say my videos. Done. Again, it will allow me to add an embed, put in where that embed's coming from, it previews it. And it's saying, look, I don't want to show the whole page. I'm just giving you opportunity now to show a preview. So let's see what the preview looks like. Not as great. So you can click on that and go through to it, but it doesn't look that great. So I might want to try something else. So for instance, I might try instead of that, let's say I get rid of that particular one. My videos can go. I might instead go into each one of these. So there's a video I did a couple of weeks ago. I might want to share it by embedding. So there's my embed code. And then I might go to my page and set up a bunch of my videos on this page. So let's just make a new page called videos. And in that videos page, I might just insert maybe two per row. In this, I'm going to embed something. So I'm going to grab the embed thing, drag it over here, embed that particular code. 
It's gonna show you roughly what it's gonna look like, which is that, insert it. That's what it looks like. Drag it up here so it looks really good. Get rid of the top bit. And then I've got my video embedded. So I don't really need to have all these sort of descriptions and all that. What I might wanna do is just take each one of these videos and make them viewable on this website. So I can get rid of that text there, don't really need it. Um, even take that whole section out and then get my next one. So my next video um, will be, I know it's not a video of mine, we'll just take this one from uh, Web3 Curriculum. Most of you are probably aware now. We don't need to hear his voice. Share, embed, pick up the 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 pick up the uh, the code. Go embed again, code, insert. There it goes, and it inserts it. So I might take that now and drag it up next to it. So there we go. I've got two of them sitting next to each other now. So I can create my video page by embedding the YouTube videos I've already made. It's just not very good at taking a whole channel and embedding it. It doesn't want to do that. So if I look through my site now, I've got my babysitting business, I've got a slideshow, I've got my three products I'm gonna put in there, my contact details in the bottom of the page. I also might wanna put a footer. That's usually where people put their copyright information, right? So copyright um, 2022, click starter. Um, I might put my ABN in there, 303, 301, 08, 5, 5, 3, 5. Don't tell them, ask me why I can remember that off by head, but I just seem to be able to. Um, 085535, there we go. And I might want to put email down there. And that will then go across every page on the website. So if I go to preview again, look at it as a widescreen. It's at the bottom of that page. Go to my bookings page. It'll be at the bottom of my bookings page. Can't really see it there because this, this is a completely embedded page. My videos page though, it should be able to showing up. Yeah, there it is. Show at the bottom of my videos page. My about page, which I haven't even got anything on, still shows at the bottom. You might think, oh, it might be nice to set that up so it's centered. So you can just do that. Go down to your footer, edit it, highlight your text, center align, publish, and it's now updated. So that's very much like, there's not that much more to learn about Google sites, except if you look at what the other things are that you can insert. So you can see like a collapsible group. Now a collapsible group is where you can have option one, and I might get some lorem ipsum text um, so that we can pick up some, like just some fill in text that I wanna put in. So here it is, lorem ipsum dolos, Grab that text, use that as example text I'm gonna have. It goes, and then that's option one, but I don't want an extra option. So I don't want just one in there. I want, I want like another one in there. So if I go in that collapsible group, I go, what's the next one I'm gonna have? I'm gonna double it. So double, option two. And see, I've got option one, option two, so I can have those, what they call accordions. So you've got an accordion to work with. Pretty cool. So you can have the accordions to hide away some content. You can have a table of contents for your entire site. I don't know how you're going to use that. Might be like for a site map, maybe. Um, image carousel we saw, we can add in a button. So let's go to our um, homepage. And let's say we're going to take out our slideshow. We want a button on the top, on the bottom of each of these ones. So we can have, you know, service one, service two. Service three. And if I want to have a button going to where that, that thing is located, let's grab a button, put the button as, um, you know, uh, click here, link it to somewhere. So we'll link it to maybe our bookings page. And that inserts a button. And I go, well, I don't like the way that button's sitting. It's sort of sitting in a place where it's like off center. It doesn't really match. What I can do is get that button, drag it up under here, see where it's going to insert under that. And it now fills that space underneath it. So it automatically does a lot of stuff for you. To make that work elsewhere, I'll do another one, drag it up, put it underneath service two. I can then edit it by double clicking, changing it from bookings to somewhere else, the untitled page. So it will now go there, do my repeat, copy, insert it in, 
and then send it off to another page, which I want to make the videos page. And now I've got my buttons in there. So the whole thing is looking very professional and very neat and very clean and tidy. Not bad for a free service, right? So let's just say I'm happy with my site and I want to make it go live. What I want to do now, once I've published, this is now live. I can actually view this website um, out there on the internet. So I click on the, the settings here and I can see a thing called custom domains. So if I go custom domains, if you do not have a domain name, if you do already have a domain name, you can use the domain from a third party, but you'll need to make some changes to what is called the DNS settings at your domain provider. The easiest way to do this is to avoid all that, just buy your domain from Google. I'll tell you now, it's going to be cheaper than buying it from elsewhere. It's only $18 a year and it automatically will integrate with this. So let's just say that our babysitting service is going to be called Bubs um, R Us. .com .au. It'll now say, if I hit it, see if it's actually available. It is. So it says bubsarus.com.au is available for $18 a year. I can now buy that and I go through the process of buying it by, you know, there's all these other versions of it, bubsarus.au. Um, we can we can find all, all the different variations of it and find the one we want. If we're sure this one's the one we want, we go to buy it and it's going to start the process of buying that domain. When it's buying that domain, you need to enter info because .com.au and .au addresses within Australia need you to have an ABN to prove that you are within Australia. So you can register it. You can register for multiple years if you want, 36 for two, $90 for five years. So it gives you discounted as you get more years. Um, and then you can set it to auto renew. Now, the other area you can do is that, that for one year, $18, $18 Australian. You can also add what is called Google Workspace. So if you wanted to then have, I want an info at bubsrus.com.au email address, you can then have professional email like that, you see, like you at bubsrus.com.au. They will default with Google Workspace to this business standard, which is $16.80 per user per month. That's great if you want to be able to run lots of email addresses through there. I only want one. I'm a tiny little business. So I changed to a business starter and that reduces to $8.40 per month. That's just for the email. If you don't want the custom email, you're happy to run it bubsarus at gmail.com. Don't select this. Just stick with just the domain name. So once I check that out, I'm not going to buy it now, but once I check that all out, that then will attach that domain name and it will take anywhere between an hour or 72 hours. By average, it's usually about an hour for me. It's actually put it as a, as a usable domain name for me and I can use it for real. For example, last night I did this, this website. I started late last night and built speakstarter.com.au. I registered that domain name last night and it's completely visible today. So it's a very fast product, a fast process that doesn't take long at all to be able to do. So I can get out of this. I don't have to continue on with this. I can just go back to my Google site. Where's my sites? Sometimes sites isn't the easiest thing to find in Google because it's, it's so relatively unused. That's the thing I find so surprising. There's such a good and powerful tool. It's just not that well known. There's sites.google.com. Now, a lot of the frequently asked questions I get about Google sites are whether they're able to, and I'll stop the sharing here so we don't really need to see that anymore. So a lot of the, the frequently asked questions I get are around SEO, search engine optimization. Are Google sites easily found? They're no better or worse found than anyone else. Um, in fact, Google doesn't care what platform you use. There's no inherent advantage to using WordPress or Joomla or Drupal or Wix or Squarespace or Google sites. They're all treated exactly the same. What it will do is that's the speed of your site. Now consider, is a Google service delivering your site very quickly, very simple, very easy sites to load, very fast. You're not going to be penalized. What we will find though, is a lot of people with Google sites will tend to get a little bit lazy on the basics of SEO. So making sure they've got really good titles that have words in them that people are searching for or content on their pages that people are searching for. So just be careful of that, that you don't get too lazy with the words, treat it like a website you normally would do, but the, the building of that website is so much easier. Uh, 
another question I get asked is, what if the price of the domains goes up? Well, you won't be back charged for that. It'll only be when it renews next year. So it might go up to $18.50. That's fine. It's still within the realms of, of, of affordable. Um, for me, it hasn't gone up in about three years. I haven't seen them go up in a long time with domain names. So there's no necessarily, you can't necessarily um, you know, predict that those prices won't change, but they haven't in three years. And if they do, it's, a yearly cost. $18 a year is a lot better than paying $50 to $90 a year for a domain name through places like Crazy Domains, who just really overcharge you for things that are really, really cheap and simple. Uh, if you want to then create a blog, what you would normally do is create your blog elsewhere. So you know how I inserted the link to go off to YouTube, the link to go off to Calendly to do the bookings? You do the same thing. Create the blog in something like Blogger. Blogger is a free system or Tumblr is a free blogging service as well. You just create a link that says blog and it points off then to the address where your Tumblr blog or your Blogger blog might happen to be. So it's really important for you to write those things. Write them on a third-party system rather than writing them in the website itself. Now, what happens when you feel like you've outgrown your Google site? Well, it's quite simple. Google domains allows you to make changes to where you point your domain to. So let's just say in two years time, you go, I'm ready now for a big boys, big girls um, WordPress site. So I want to go to WordPress now. What do I do? Well, yeah, you just go and build your website like you normally would with any website. But in this case, you'll go to your Google domains and update where that domain points to. It doesn't always have to be going to Google sites. You can point to anywhere you like. If you've got web hosting with um, GoDaddy or you've got web hosting with Synergy Wholesale or, or Ventra IP or Digital Pacific or any of those companies, it's okay. You can point your, your address to that service and it will then change what people see from your Google site to your WordPress site. So you can easily transport those domain names. As far as these go, you can add extra users to this. So if you've got uh, a virtual assistant who's come on board, you can add another user to these sites. So you can, um, in, the, in those same settings we're looking at, it shows who it's visible to and who it's editable by. So just like in Google Drive, you can make a document that is visible to people or it can be edited by people. You do exactly the same with your Google site. And in fact, Google Sites is part of Google Drive. It's the same thing. It's just that it's a visible, indexable, and, um, and, and dynamic page rather than a document that's sitting in Drive. 